Hi, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today and welcome to another monthly edition of our Microsoft Teams news update. So today I'm joined by Microsoft MVP and UC Solutions architect Tom Abothnot. Hiya Tom, how are you doing? Yeah, good thanks Rob. Yeah, all good here, how are you? I'm very good, thank you, very good. Uh, although I must admit I do have a distraction possibly switched on today which is my mother-in-law's chihuahua. Uh, in the back room, so I do apologise in advance if uh, there are any, <laughs> if there is any barking at all in the background of this uh, this video today. So. No problem. It's all the, all the working from home fun, right? It's all okay now. Exactly, and uh, I'm sure the technology will probably suppress it anyway, won't it? So, uh, anyway, how's things going at your end? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It stayed stayed fairly busy actually. Um, it, all the, I mean, certainly locally in the UK, the the covid thing is is rearing its head again and it seems like more and more organizations are admitting it's here to stay lots of conversations about working hybrid so having some people in the office some people at home and the technology around that but yeah generally busy yeah yeah i feel you definitely i'm in tier three at the moment so it's a bit of a pain um but i did manage to get a haircut today I'm not going anywhere, but I did manage to get a haircut at least. So. Just treat yourself for the video. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice of you to uh, get sorted for the video. Not like yeah. me. <laughs> I just shave. So there's that. Well done. So have you got the Ignite Blues? A uh, bit of a hangover from uh, you know last few weeks. Lots of news came out. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah. Last month we had like a whole rattle of news. So I guess we're into the quarter where that stuff should start to get delivered. So we've got some got some bits this month. But yeah, I think last month was a top. 10 things of many things this month a little bit a little bit less news but still some there's always something to dig into for sure yeah absolutely so uh, we've got quite a bit you know so let's get started i mean first of all i'd like to mention and you know offer a congratulations to microsoft for landing in the top right hand corner of uh, gartner's magic quadrant for meeting solutions this uh, in the, well just in the last few weeks yeah yeah hotly hotly contended space at the moment with uh, with zoom and and Google and, and others in play there. So uh, nice to see. I think it's interesting with Gartner and those classifications, which products are which, hitting which quadrants now? Because I guess meetings is a feature of Teams, but yeah, it is obviously a platform that rightly is in that, that quadrant as well. Yeah, it, it is an interesting quadrant. I, I, you know, I don't know whether the classification is or the description or the kind of modeling of, of that particular magic quadrant is, is right for today's market in terms of you know video meetings and equipment there's so much to it but it just kind of it doesn't seem to cover everything in there but um still lots of the major kind of software for kind of video conferencing uh as a service providers in there yeah yeah big 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 and interesting area at the moment obviously because of uh, everything that's going on it's really popped mm, absolutely so um in terms of getting started and the news for this month, Tom, we said we'd talk about the uh, recording and contact center API, first of all. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so we talked about this uh, a few months ago. So Microsoft produced a, a new license called Advanced Communications, and they bundled in a whole bunch of abilities for meetings in that, but also made it a requirement for the more advanced contact center APIs and call recording APIs. So this is not recording like a convenience recording, like you can record your meeting. This is your finance legal. I need a compliance recording of every single PS2 call, every single meeting, every single peer to peer call. It's that scenario. Um, and Microsoft came out with this advanced comms license listing at $12 per user and bundled those APIs into that license. And now they have said that it isn't required anymore to have that advanced comms license to use the contact center APIs or the call recording, compliance recording APIs. Yeah, it's a bit of a U-turn, but uh, ultimately good for, for all the organizations out there looking for full fat kind of compliant call recording. Yeah, although I think that, that, that that's, it's an area that we're going to have to keep watching because Microsoft haven't said it's definitely not going to be licensed in the future so that their exact wording was uh, advanced communication license is not required for compliance recording api and it can now be used until the 31st of july 2021 and no additional charge but that's a very specific date it so uh, i haven't got anything more that's public yet around that but if you're using that api or you need the api i think it's worth having conversations with with partners and microsoft about what the what the plan is there but it's not like they outright said this api is is 
free forever or bundled in in e5 they've just said it's it's still available to use yeah interesting so one certainly one to keep an eye on so next up was something i spotted as well around kind of microsoft teams uh, native arm 64 client for windows 10. now i did read a few of the he headlines on this but um I know yeah. you're a big arm head, Rob. So uh... you know, do you know what? I didn't really understand what arm was until I read this <laughs> kind of article. But uh, your blog kind of tells it all. But you know, give us a uh, scoop on uh, what Microsoft Teams have done. Yeah, so arm is a type of chip. So it's the kind of chips that uh, run modern mobile devices. So uh, it's a chip design that many people license and, and manufacture, like Qualcomm, and, it, and the the Apple do their own silicon now, but it's kind of based on that approach. Uh, so there are now laptop-like machines that run ARM, and there's a special edition of Windows 10, it's called Windows 10 on ARM. Uh, and the, the, the most popular, uh, if not the only laptop I'm aware of, is the Surface Pro X. So like super lightweight, loads of battery life. Um, and, and the way those work is they can emulate uh, traditional x86 applications. So you could always run Teams on it, but it was running under emulation. And what they've now done is produced a dedicated ARM application for Teams, so it's native. So better performance, better battery life, reliability. Um, and it's interesting because it's, it's Microsoft Surface Pro X, it's Microsoft Windows 10 on ARM. So obviously they've got the investment to make sense for them to do an ARM native client. I think it's one of the things you only see from a vendor who's got all those things in play to make it worthwhile. I think Windows 10 on ARM as a platform is probably not big enough for the other vendors to go native on. Interesting, yeah, because I mean, Microsoft Teams can be a little bit hungry uh, on, on the processor. So this it, 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 ultimately is an efficiency thing, isn't it? You know, ultimately getting more out of the uh, machine for longer. Yeah, very, very much so. Yeah, uh, just just any time you don't need to do emulation, you're going to get a better experience. So yeah, it allows mm -hmm. them to be uh, super efficient on battery life and uh, generally more performant as well. Interesting. Good, 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 good update. I like that one. So number three on the list today was we're going to talk about Teams offline mode. Now something that uh, I'm often offline in the north of England up here because my broadband is terrible. So tell us more about that one. Yeah, this is a funny one, isn't it? So for a giant cloud SaaS service having an offline mode, uh, so obviously there are scenarios where you don't have connectivity, like traditionally, you know, a flight would have been the obvious one, although more and more of those have Wi-Fi. Mm. Uh, so so Teams has a, now an offline mode where you can essentially be signed in, and it's not full functionality. Obviously, a lot doesn't work without the cloud, but you can uh, see your chat messages, see your channel messages, those kind of things. Uh, there's no calendar, because that's a direct connection to Exchange Online, uh, and you can have some of your files synced down via OneDrive as well. Uh, and this is interesting, both because it's a, a function in its own right, but they're also planning on adding uh, the ability to queue messages to be sent offline. So one of the things I used to do on flights a lot was churn through loads and loads of email, uh, get it all queued up. Yeah, and people yeah. people used to know because I'd land and like there'd, there'd be like a bunch of things chased that I hadn't chased since the last time I'd had a bunch of times. So yeah. Just, just uh, what's happening with this, what's happening with this. It was quite like a news of emails, yeah, coming from top Yeah, of yeah, it was just literally like, yeah, some some <laughs> poor people that were in my queue would be like, boom, 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 boom. Um, but, but Microsoft are going to add the same thing to Teams. So they're going to have an offline mode. So when you're offline, you can still send messages and they'll be queued up to when you're back online. Um, but this will also form part of the conversation around survivability. So we talked last show about survival branch appliances bringing yeah. telephony when it's offline. So teams will go into an offline mode that will be able to make and receive calls if you've got one of those appliances as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool then. So does that have an impact on security or are we kind of treating this the same as you would offline mode in, say, OneDrive? Yeah, I mean, it definitely has a consideration because it's, it's caching some local data, but Teams does that anyway. Um, so I think more or less the security stance is the same, which you'd you'd perfect, protect it at the device level, like encrypted yeah. devices, passwords, multi-factor, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, something something a security you might want to consider is how much data is staying locally. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, that, 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 I can see that being very handy. So, uh, number four, we said we talk about Android in, or should we talk about Android in the world of Microsoft? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. So, 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 uh, 
last month ignite we talked about what were called collaboration bars are now called microsoft teams room for android mm -hmm. um, so just just android getting a name check in a microsoft product front and center is is interesting isn't it yeah. um they've obviously got the surface duo as well their android don't call it a phone phones so it's so android is more and more becoming piece of microsoft ecosystem that they're they're taking on first party and what this list is is a list of things that are coming to the microsoft teams room for android so they're doing i've got a list here 1080p uh, outgoing video so previously it was 720p three by three gallery layout, large gallery layout, together mode, breakout room support, spotlight, which is like framing in on a single speaker, um, dual front screens. So previously there were single screen devices, adding uh, the center of room consoles to control the room system, wired HDMI ingest. So these are all features that are in the Microsoft Teams room for Windows, but Android was kind of a lighter, lesser, cousin now it's getting close to being exactly the same uh, and the last one on the list is they're adding a personal mode for teams room systems which is a direct response again to more and more people using those devices at home or in the exec office so you can have a a mode where you run a dedicated system but it's not running like a meeting room it's just running like a personal endpoint mm, interesting hey there's so much going on isn't there oh, wow um yeah, I mean, it's just just interesting that Android is is it, clearly other players in the market using Android as their room systems as well. It's obviously popular enough with customers that they're pushing through these features onto the Android edition Ooh, clients. Yeah. Wow. So uh, interesting stuff. Next on our list, we said we'd talk about the short retention deletion policies. Um, tell us more about that, because we said we'd maybe chat through this for a few minutes. Yeah, you know, not news, but yeah, I did a blog on this because it's come up a few times with customers recently. Uh, so, so Microsoft has the ability to do retention policies and, and maybe counterintuitively named retention policies in, in Microsoft 365 will retain data for a certain period of time or explicitly delete it after a certain period of time. So your use cases there are the kind of, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley type scenario where you're you're absolutely required to keep data for X period of time. Like you, you can't allow anybody to delete it. But on the flip side of that, lots of people want to maintain the minimal amount of data they're legally required to so that if there's a, a legal issue or a court case and they're compelled to do discovery, they can only present what they keep. So if you didn't keep it, you don't have to present it. But if you did keep it, you're you're compelled to present it. Uh, so that that leads to an interesting situation where legal teams and customers generally want to retain as little as possible because if we don't have it, we can't show it. And Microsoft Teams chat kind of comes under attack as a feature there because they're like, well, people are a bit more casual in chat. They're a bit more, you know, free to say whatever they want because it's chat mm. so so legal firms often say look we should retain chat for less time than say emails or channel messages because channel messages are about a project people are going to be formal and correct private yeah. chat they might be a bit more loose about their talking about projects and customers um, which which it makes sense right if that's your job is to minimize exposure but then you end up in this funny situation where it gets taken to quite an extreme where technically you can set private chat retention to one day. So effectively, if the message is there for past 24 hours, it will get removed. And I feel like that massively impacts the usability of Teams private chat because you're changing really? persistent chat into instant messaging, essentially. Yeah. Um, but 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 even but like even to the point where if I sent you a message on Friday and you didn't happen to be around, it's going to be deleted before Monday. So I can't rely on chat anymore. I what do I do? I send you a chat, see you didn't reply, and then send you an email so it queues up for you. Um, so, so not I'm not a lawyer, and I don't give legal advice, but there's definitely a uh, a trade-off here between usability and risk exposure, and I think it's an interesting conversation for enterprises. Yeah, it is, and and, and I think that's something we're hearing more and more of all the time. I was speaking to uh, kind of the AI compliance guys over at Theta Lake uh, recently, and. Yep. We're talking about that trade-off between, you know, uh, security compliance and UX, and it, it just seems a bit of a challenge. And yeah, enterprises have to kind of make that decision ultimately, don't they? And about where they draw the line. 
yeah yeah it's a, it's 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 a real yeah like i say if, if my if my job was the lawyer and you asked me what the minimum amount of exposure is it's probably what you'd say but then it's like the you know well how are the computers most secure well let's turn them all off because that's the most secure like the, 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 there's a usability risk yeah. ratio there um but yeah i think there's a real interesting kind of argument as well is if you if you cripple your corporate tools people will absolutely go to shadow it so like we're super compliant because yeah. we've locked it all down well great everybody's using whatsapp so <laughs> who, who, how how deep risks have you really made it yeah absolutely yeah good point a hey, great blog uh, and a really really good topic that one um and finally tom i was just going to mention that jabra sent me uh, a new toy to play with they sent me one of their panacast 180 degree kind of panoramic webcams have you seen one of these yeah yeah interesting device yeah it looks like a uh a, a little spaceship or something through the yeah, uh, big heat sink you almost kind of want it to grow wings and kind of hover around the room you know and do yeah i don't thing. know if you've seen the uh the amazon ring like uh, they've got those flying cameras now so you can set it yeah. in your home and it'll do a lap that looks like looks like one of those yeah it could, it could do full reconnaissance while i'm out as well yeah i mean it's pretty cool it's very lightweight but it, it you know, it's really different looking and it just landed in the post today. So I'm going to have a, a test drive of that. Maybe we can do our next uh, session nice. on uh, on the panic. We can, we we can do it ultra it. wide. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going quite look at, I like the, I like toys. So yeah, new toys. Always good. Nice. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see how you go. On. Indeed. So last but not least, I did want to mention our Microsoft uh, Teams focus kind of direct routing focused event even uh, on the 17th and 18th of November. Yeah, so, yeah, we did. So we did a session for that. Then we say so me, you, and Randy talking about direct routing. Uh, that yeah, it's a really hot topic at the moment. Like everybody, say everybody, like like all all of our customers have gone aggressively to Teams for for meetings and for for COVID stuff. And lots of them are massively accelerating telephony now because they're working from home, need soft phones, need it now, want to want to also save money by consolidating onto a single platform. Yeah, I, mean, I you know, I've been spending a lot of time talking about direct routing and there's so many different options available to organizations looking at kind of migrating out the old PBX into a Microsoft Teams environment. It's, uh, there's lots happening in that space. Yeah, lots of different options and yeah, lots of different, like, do you do it in-house? Do you outsource it? Do you outsource the carrier but insource the SBC? So yeah, I think we did a session where we went through all the all the options and the pros and cons there. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in direct routing or moving your Microsoft Teams environment to a kind of full UC, UCAS uh, environment, you know, do jump on uh, ucsummit.com, our virtual event platform, and uh, register for free for our Talking Teams event. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of sessions lined up. Um, it would be good value for anyone looking at direct routing right now. So, And Tom, that's it from us. So uh, thank you very much for another news update. I'll see you again next month. Yeah, great stuff. Cheers, Rob. Yeah, and if anybody's got any comments or questions or feedback, uh, comments on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, love to hear that stuff. So thanks. And that's it from us. If you've enjoyed today's session, please do give us a quick like or share on social. It's always appreciated. Or hit that subscribe button. I'm Rob Scott from UC Today. Thanks for watching.